But what I want to really share with you is my favorite dua in the Quran. And I think it's a very relevant dua for pretty much all of us here in the audience. And to set the stage for this dua, I'm sure some of you have heard me talk about this dua before, but I personally don't care. I'm going to repeat it because فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ فَعَتِ الذِّكْرَ Remind, reminder has benefit. So I hope to benefit myself and all of you with this reminder. There's a powerful expression in the Qur'an, it's captured in two words. Those two words are قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ The coolness of the eyes. A simple translation will yield coolness of the eyes. And it's mentioned in a number of occasions, it's also found in a hadith of the Messenger Okay. Before I tell you how it's used in sacred text, I want to tell you how the ancient Arabs used to use this figure of speech, this expression. It's really a figure of speech, so we can't really understand it literally, it means something more. In the Arab idiom, there were two expressions, without getting too technical with you guys, there's the eyes becoming cool and the eyes becoming warm. That's the first thing I'd like you to know. The Arabs had two figures of speech, the eyes becoming cool and the eyes becoming warm. When somebody is shedding tears of sorrow, they're suffering the worst kind of fate. They are in deep depression and sadness and calamity. Then when you would look at them, the Arab would say at least, his eyes have become warm. One of the worst curses, you can curse upon someone in the Arabic language, in ancient Arabic, Allahu aynahu, may Allah make his eyes warm means may he suffer the worst kinds of sorrows in his life. The exact opposite is what? The eyes becoming cool. For your sorrows, for your sadness, for your pains to be removed completely, and for you to feel peace and tranquility and joy like nothing else. And I'll give you, I'll give you a simple example of coolness and warmth of the eyes before I continue. Imagine you're at the airport, right? And there are two pair, there's a pair of a mother and a son, and another mother and another son. But this mother is saying farewell to her son. He's flying off somewhere. And the other mother is greeting her son, who flew in from somewhere. And both of the mothers are crying. But one of them, their eyes is cool, and the others, the eyes are warm. One is shedding tears of joy. She sees her son after many years. She's crying too, but these are eyes becoming cool. The other's letting go of her son. These are what? The eyes becoming warm. You understand the difference? Right? Now, another, you know, a few pieces of context before I go further. The poet in Arabia says, my, the, the eyes of my tribe will remain warm. And he's actually an assassin also. Yeah, poets are assassins. It's kind of an Arab thing, I guess. But, so he's waiting on a sand dune, waiting to kill the tribe leader that has offended his tribe. And he makes poetry in the meantime. I guess he's got a lot of time. So he says, the, 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 my tribe's eyes will remain warm until my dagger is warm, isn't warm with his blood. In other words, when, when I kill this guy, then my, my tribe's eyes will become cool. The rage, the frustration, the humiliation they feel will only disappear upon this guy's death. That's what I'm here to do, to cool the eyes of my tribe. You understand? So it's a means of relieving frustration and anger and ill feelings. That's how the, in, in which context it's used. But then there's a final context that I want to share with you in Arabic literature, where this expression is found. It's very beautiful actually. The Arab used to travel in the desert. And there's a sandstorm. And in a sandstorm, the Arab would you know, wrap his face up, because obviously your face is being pounded with sand. Now the camel on which he's riding, Allah created the camel in a magnificent fashion, the eyelids of the camel actually trap sand and drop them. It doesn't even have to blink. It's got a screen in front of its eyes that captures sand and drops it. It's, we don't have that, you know, that screen system in our eyes, but the camel does. But now the rider, he can't afford to cover his eyes, can he? Because if he covers his eyes, what's the problem? He doesn't know where he's going. So he has to keep his eyes exposed. And so finally he finds a cave. He finds some refuge. And he says, interestingly, my eyes have finally become what? Cool. In other words, in literature, we find the precedent of the eyes becoming cool equated with finding refuge from a storm. Finding refuge from a storm. Now I've set the stage for you for what this expression stands for, but I still haven't told you my favorite dua, though I recited it in the beginning. This is at the conclusion of the 25th surah of the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Rabbana, He tells us to say, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ Those who say, رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Our Master, our Lord, gift us, grant us. You know in Quran we find آتِنَا, give us, 
a'tina, to give a grand gift. But hab, gift us, an unexpected gift, a beautiful gift, hab lana. This is a gift you're asking Allah to give you. And lana is muqaddam, this, this prepositional phrase is brought earlier, especially for us. We're asking for a special favor to Allah. And what is this favor that we're asking God? Uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla? Grant us from our spouses and not just our children, which is awlaad dhurriyatina. You know, wa Future generations of us. In other words, you're not even asking for your immediate children, but your lineage from, you know, for generations to come. Grant us from all of them coolness of eyes. Make our eyes cool by means of our, by means of our spouses and by means of our children. 